In this video, we're going to talk about voltage-gated sodium channels. So let me just reorientate you to this diagram here that we've been using for most of these videos. I think this one's going to be the last in this sort of short playlist on neuromuscular physiolo physiology. Um, and it covers a pretty important topic in these sodium channels. We talked before about the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. So I will draw those on here. That's uh, these receptors here. And we talked about that when an acetylcholine molecule, two acetylcholine molecules bind to one of these receptors, they open, uh, causing sodium influx into the muscle membrane, which causes depolarization. And in previous videos, I kind of just left you with the idea that these sodium channels sort of pick it up from there and carry the wave of depolarization down the rest of the muscle membrane. So in this video, we're just going to get into a little bit more detail than that. So once this sodium enters from the acetylcholine receptors opening, there's going to be depolarization of this muscle membrane. And we're going to zoom in on one, uh, one of these sodium channels, actually a couple of them, and have a look at what this depolarization of the muscle membrane does to the sodium channel to allow it to propagate that depolarization down the rest of the muscle membrane outside of the neuromuscular junction. We're now zoomed in on the sodium channels, and I'll add in that wave of depolarization that was coming down the muscle membrane. And remember, this yellow wave of depolarization is from the opening of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors at the neuromuscular junction caused by binding of acetylcholine. That caused the sodium influx into the muscle membrane and depolarization of that, mem of that uh, muscle membrane. When that wave of depolarization reaches this, these voltage-gated sodium channels, they are going to open. So let's have a look at how that happens. You can see here that there's two gates of these channels. There's a voltage gate, the one in the green and the purple, and then there's a time gate in the, in the blue and the yellow. And they serve different purposes. The voltage gate, as its name implies, is going to open when it experiences this depolarization from, of the muscle membrane. So when it experiences that change in voltage, this is going to open, and we're going to be left with the situation in the middle here, where this channel has both an open voltage gate and an open time gate. And you'll notice that on the channel on the left, that in the resting position, which is what this one is, I'll, maybe I'll just write that. This is the kind of resting position of the channel. In its resting position, the voltage gate is closed and the time gate is open, okay? The voltage gate experiences the voltage change of the muscle membrane caused by depolarization at the neuromuscular junction. The voltage gate opens. And now we have an open voltage gate and an open time gate, which allows sodium to rush down the membrane and cause depolarization of the muscle membrane. Okay, if you imagine a whole row of these sodium channels down the muscle membrane, when, when this sodium channel experiences the depolarization of the muscle membrane, the voltage gate opens and sodium rushes down it, it then causes subsequent depolarization of the muscle membrane near it, which then triggers the next sodium channel and the next sodium channel. And this is how this wave of depolarization travels down the muscle membrane to cause a muscle contraction. I'm just going to remove a few of these squiggles so it's a bit neater. If we see the channel on the far right, we've noticed something different happened there. In this channel, the time gate has closed. The time gate has gone from its resting position of being opened to being closed now. This happens a short period of time after the voltage gate opens. And that's a mechanism that's in place to prevent the channel from being open forever. So the voltage gate opens and to make sure that some sodium comes in across the membrane, enough to cause depolarization, but not too much, the time gate will then close. And this makes this channel inactive. So we'll say like this is an inactivated, inactivated channel. What we can see here then is that the voltage-gated sodium channel has three different configurations. On the left, you see its resting state. The voltage gate is closed and the time gate is open. In the middle, we see the channel in its open configuration. The voltage gate has been triggered to open by a voltage change in the muscle membrane. 
and the time gate has not yet closed, so the channel is open and sodium rushes down its concentration gradient. On the right, we see that the voltage gate is still open. The reason it's still open is because it's still experiencing the voltage change of the muscle membrane. Yet, a fixed period of time has gone by since the voltage gate opened for the time gate to close. That's how these time gates work. They stay open until a fixed period of time after the voltage gate has opened, and then they close. So do these sodium channels remain in this inactivated state forever? Well, obviously not. We need them to be able to reset themselves so this process can take place more than once. So how do they get back from the inactivated state back to the resting state? The only reason the voltage gate of this inactivated channel is open is because it, it is experiencing the voltage change of the muscle membrane. So if this voltage change was to go away, this um, voltage gate would close. Now, if we think back to the what's happening at the neuromuscular junction, we said in previous videos that the acetylcholine only binds to the acetylcholine receptor for a fraction of a second. It binds, and then it unbinds, and is invariably destroyed by in uh, acetylcholinesterase. So when the acetylcholine unbinds from the acetylcholine receptors, that depolarization of the muscle membrane that we started with this explanation with goes away. And once that depolarization of the muscle membrane goes away, there is nothing left to trigger the voltage gate of these sodium channels to open, so the voltage gate closes. Shortly after the voltage gate closes, the time gate will go back to its resting state of being open. Understanding the action of these sodium channels is really important for a couple of reasons. One, it helps us understand how the actions at the neuromuscular junction between acetylcholine, acetylcholine receptors, and all the stuff we've already talked about, how those get propagated down the rest of the muscle membrane. Because as we've said in previous videos, these acetylcholine receptors under normal conditions are not present outside the neuromuscular junction. So how does the rest of the muscle membrane depolarize if without some other mechanism? And these sodium channels are that other mechanism. So that's the first reason. And the second reason is that this foreshadows a conversation that we'll be having in the future about depolarizing muscle relaxants and how those muscle relaxants um, have their effect and how they lead to paralysis. So I think that's enough for this video. Hopefully that's perked your interest in how depolarizing muscle relaxants work and you can look out for the videos I'll be releasing on those later on.